Hi, the Via Francigena. I expect that you're watching this video because you are planning to undertake this journey and trying to glean any information you can to make it a successful trip. I'm now going to go through the kit that I took with me when I walked it between April and July 2017. The Pilgrim's Passport. You will need two of these. Your passport, a notebook and pen. A small, very lightweight bag to put them all in, to centralise them, and also to put mementos and receipts, etc. in as you go along. A mobile phone and charging equipment. A compass, this is something I take with me everywhere. And not necessarily needed on such a journey because it is mainly tracks. One thing to bear in mind is with um, batteries and compasses is that the battery will adversely affect the compass and in time will in fact ruin it. A small pen knife. An industrial rated corkscrew, very important. This was a spork and now it's a spoon. A tripod, uh, using the phone as a camera and a video camera. And lighting. I use the pen torch. The benefit of this it easily slips into your pocket when you go out drinking or eating at night. It converts to a head torch by slipping into this harness. A, a luminous armband, get caught out at night walking. And uh, a red uh, light again could be attached to the head harness and also it can be used instead of the white light when setting up your tent uh, at night uh, if you're while camping obviously when it's on steady red personal grooming kit as um, it's that it's an individual choice um, I took foot care items and also a few tablets like paracetamol antihistamine and indigestion tablets uh, all of these are available but if you get caught out so at night time it's a good thing to have especially if you're in a lot of pain to have some sort of painkillers tissue you can buy this along the way you don't need to buy fill your rucksack with tissue they do sell it over there and uh, alcohol gel it's very sunny in Italy and I've got a very fair skin so I took a high factor sun cream and used use gallons of it. Sunglasses, uh, you can leave these in restaurants. I left these, uh, these went for six weeks and then um, I met, met someone picked them up for me and uh, I met him and he gave them back uh, some weeks later. A neckerchief protects the bottom of the neck and also the nape of the neck. Um, lip seal, very important. The lower lip is at the perfect angle to catch loads of sun and um, if you wear anything always wear this. Um, a hat, I use a white brim hat again because I have such fair skin. I've seen people go down with heat exhaustion uh, several times when I was in the military and it's quite surprising who it, who succumbs to it. Uh, some of the fittest people would go down. Um, it's very important to protect yourself from the sun. And cooking equipment. I took a very small lightweight stove, this is a bit of a luxury. Some people are not interested at all, wouldn't take anything like that. But I do like to have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee in the morning when I'm camping. Take two small cups with me. Uh, you never know when you might meet someone. Uh, you don't need to clean these, you just wash them out with red wine. And this cloth is to wrap around the cylinder which goes into this cooking container. It stops it from banging against the edges as you walk along. A small lightweight bag, these are excellent, they weigh next to nothing. And they're so good when you go shopping at night for your groceries or your food and also just general tourism. Um, they're very good for putting anything in and they're even a little bit waterproof. Main bag, very lightweight rucksack, walking stick, not the one I took with me. I left that in Rome at the last hostel. Blow up sleeping mat. Several waterproof bags for putting different kit in. 
you know, at night time it's excellent to have your kit in different coloured bags so you can spot them really easy especially when you're camping wild camping at dusk it makes everything so much easier and also these are very slidey against each other so they slide out of the bag really easily a tent this tent uh, is an MSR tent and it weighed or weighs about 560 grams which is ludicrously light but the upshot of that is there's very little insulation and it got down to about minus four in France and with all my warm kit on I was frozen I also bought along this tarp which is incredibly light and that added um, a little bit more insulation to the tent and also because it's got such a thin ground sheet it added more protection to the ground sheet water bottle pillow and a towel this is um, this is a piece of cotton it dries out so quickly it doesn't absorb much but it absorbs enough and also it can be used as a sun um, shield and also um, when you're sleeping in hostels you can lay this on the bed and sleep on top of this uh, it's really versatile excellent piece of kit a sleeping bag Now we're going on to clothing. Three pairs of socks, one off, one on, and one in the wash. And three pairs of underpants. These are actually from Audi. They're made of bamboo and they're really effective, I've found. A pair of shorts. Three long sleeve t-shirts. Uh, they're made of merino wool, so you can wear them again and again and they don't ever smell. T-shirt, pair of trousers for going out at night. This is a really lightweight, I would say it's incredibly lightweight, but it is. Uh, wind stopper, so handy, so versatile, but very good piece of equipment. These are a pair of walking trousers. I wore these through France and through Switzerland. Uh, they're temperate walking trousers and um, They've got great rain resistant, although they're not waterproof. You don't need waterproof trousers, really. Uh, they're just something. another thing you've got to carry. These are perfectly adequate. And waterproof, uh, as such, um, this waterproof, very lightweight. There's uh, everything, a bit of a pattern form in here, but actually in the end wasn't waterproof. This is a rucksack cover. It also covers your shoulders and your head. This is very waterproof, and this made up for the fact that the other thing wasn't waterproof. This really, because of the position of you walking, always leaning forward, uh, this is um, takes the majority of the, any any rain. Yeah, it's a very uh, very good piece of equipment. I took an umbrella. This isn't the umbrella. I left the umbrella at in Rome. Um, yeah, I didn't buy the umbrella until I needed it. I think it was in Champlit uh, in France when we first hit rain. It rained through about three days. I do like an umbrella. It's great for getting out of the tent when it's pouring with rain. It's good for keeping the sun off as well. Warm clothing. A uh, body warmer. A pair of gloves. A hat, a fleece, and of course, footwear. A pair of flip flops, the down tie, and the boots. Well, they don't take you home, they take you to Rome. And on the way to Rome, you've got to go through Switzerland. And you find when you go over the Alps and then you go down into the Valle of Aosta, the uh, temperature and the climate 
changes quite considerably when you go in through like Vercelli. Uh, it's quite humid there and it, generally you'll be doing this in the summer, it'll get hotter and hotter going over through Tuscany etc. Uh, the, the climate you uh, experience here depending on the time of year is could be considerably different to the climate in France and Switzerland. So when we get to Aosta, we're able to offload a lot of equipment. And now I'll go um, through what's, uh, how it changed when I got into Italy, how much lighter uh, my bag was. So, my youngest daughter came out at Martinet to walk for a couple of days. When she came out, I asked her to bring with her a, um, a thin sleeping bag, two pairs of thin socks, a t-shirt and a shirt. She also bought this thermal blanket. She walked for a couple of days and then we went our separate ways at Borg St. Pierre on the 22nd of May. And when she left, she took with her the thick socks and the two long sleeve t-shirts. We walked over the Alps and down the other side to Aosta. As it was a mountain, you've got to respect mountains and the way the weather changes so quickly and can get so extreme. Indeed, the week before there was quite a heavy blanketing of snow. So we had to take our shelters and also our warm kit over the top of the Alps. So when I got to Aosta, I sent all the stuff back that I didn't think I'd need for the rest of the journey. And this consisted of the waterproof, that wasn't waterproof, the poncho, as I still had an umbrella, I sent that back as well, the lightweight tarp, the sleeping bag, the walking trousers, the temperate walking trousers and all of the warm gear. Now I was left to sleep in the lightweight thermal blanket and my warm gear was the um, long sleeve merino wool t-shirt and the very lightweight windproof uh, top. During the day, I would wear, and this is every day, I wore the shirt, which washed easily every night and dried out so quickly. You could even put it on wet and it'd be dry within half an hour. And these trousers, which I purchased in Aosta, very thin uh, and made for that type of environment. And of course, I wore those, so I wasn't carrying them anyway every day. There's one more thing, I also sent back the top of the rucksack, because this wasn't needed either. And there you have it. Clothing and equipment is a personal thing. If you think that you're going to be too hot, then be brave and discard. If you think you're going to be cold, then load up and spend a warm night. And of course, every day, how much you carry, the weight, is going to change depending on the distance, time, and the environment and weather you're going through. You'll have to pack up with more water or more food if there are no stops. So, good luck and enjoy.